Senator, Senator Schatz, could I, I comment on that? You, you said that the four people... Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I do have a meeting at 4.30, and I did not ask a question of Mr. Stein. I, I apologize. I do have to go. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'd, like, Stein, I'd like to make a comment welcome, on what he... You're welcome to give a response. Sure. I'd like to make a comment on what he said, because uh, uh, he, he said that these, these people uh, represent a, a, a tiny minority point of view. The 97% consensus from these papers... Uh, does not argue for the kind of measures uh, that are being discussed here today. Uh, that we are talking about the greatest, just to take the pro-climate people at their word, we are talking about the greatest shift in the global economy that has ever been contemplated. We hear a lot of talk about risk management. This is a hell of a risk. And it requires, if we are to take these pro-climate people at their word, it would require the greatest societal consensus, left, right, and center across North America, Europe, and the developing world. So to exclude, if you exclude Professor Christie, if you exclude Professor Curry, if you exclude Professor Happer, if you exclude the French weatherman who, who basically just lost his job for writing a book uh, countering climate change, if you refuse Professor Leonard Benson, whose career was destroyed because he wanted to meet with a skeptic think tank, the great Swedish climatologist, if you exclude the Nobel Prize winner in physics from 1973 and the Nobel Prize winner in physics from 1988, you wind up with what has happened to climate alarmism, where the poll showed the real 97% consensus that only 3% of Americans view this as their overriding priority. The point that Admiral Titley made about things we could do, he brought up, he brought up Super Storm Sandy as an example of climate change. You know what would have stopped Sandy? If they built the same storm barrier that the Dutch coast has, that the Russians have in St. Petersburg, and that London has with the Thames barrier, for a couple of billion dollars, you wouldn't have had water in the New York subway. But instead, when we talk about all the saving the planet stuff, the uh, flood barrier never gets built. And that's what elected legislators should focus on, the real issues involving them now, not the pie in the sky stuff. Thank you, Mr. Stein, and, and I would note Dr. Titley made reference to dead white guys, and, and in response to Senator Shant's question about 97 percent of scientists in this one bogus and discredited study, uh, in the year 1615, I suspect if you asked 97 percent of scientists at the time would have said categorically that the sun rotates around the earth, uh, and yet an individual named Galileo dared to actually be a scientist and take measurements and stand up to that enforced consensus. Uh, and I would note it was the Roman Inquisition that brought heretics before it who dared to say that the earth rotates around the sun. And today the global warming alarmists have taken the language of the Roman Inquisition, so going so far as labeling anyone who dares point to the actual science as a denier, which is, of course, the language of religion. It is calling someone a heretic. Uh, and any time you hear people saying scientists should not question the conventional wisdom, you are hearing someone advocating essentially for the abolition of science. Mm -hmm. Senator Udall. Uh, 